Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Nadia Juxtambayeva. This is nerve-wracking. Dear President Drugovich, dear inspiring honorees, dear faculty and staff, which I love so very much, dear alumni community to which I so proudly belong, dear parents, friends, and family members who brought this day about and carried this graduate class to the finish line, and most importantly, dear graduating class of 2018. What an absolute honor to be here with you today. 20 years ago, in August of 98, I arrived here at Hartwick College with big dreams of big achievements, a very bad English, and about $400 in my pocket. In the Soviet Union, $400 would buy me an apartment. Here, I bought some sheets, some toothpaste, and a pair of really nice winter boots. <laughs> With my achievement hopes, the popular wisdom goes that to achieve something, you need to have this very clear vision of the future. But growing up in the Iron Curtain land, I didn't have much of a vision. My government decided everything for me, what I was to eat, where I was to live, and if I was to graduate in the Soviet Union, it would also decide what exact job I was to assume and where exactly I was to leave upon graduation. So on my very first day at Hartwick, I had shiny new boots and absolutely no idea of what I was to be. From the very first day, Hartwick dared me to build this new vision, this missing vision of what could be what big idea I could be part of. In the political science debate, Professor Mary Vanderland asked me to imagine a different kind of society. In psychology, Professor Wanda Jagaki worked countless hours on empirical studies with me and also calmed my nerves when the data didn't return the way I wanted to. You know, we all want the data to give the story we want to give. In accounting, Professor Stephen Kalenda, I don't know if Steve is here today, uh, brought his daughter to school to show to us that any accounting problem could be solvable. She was right more often than us, and she was under 10. <laughs> In management, Professor Penny Whiteman really taught me what perseverance is in that final year of senior thesis. And Professor Doug Mayer introduced me to my future profession, organizational behavior, from a book from his personal library. He then fundraised funds for me to take the Greyhound tickets so I could make it to Cleveland PhD interview. As you can see, Hartwick literally made me and remade me again. And once I graduated, the ideas and friendships that were seated here sustained me forever. So I really owe much of the success that President Dragovich so beautifully listed in the introduction to this very hill. So imagine how humbled and moved and honored I was to receive this invitation and how freaked out I was. Because what can you possibly say to an amazing class and their amazing family and friends after four years of the best ideas, the best faculty, the best talks, the best of everything? What else can I say? You've heard it all. There is a kind of assumption that graduation speeches don't matter. Of course, there are occasionally here and there a speech that goes viral or stays in the memory for years. But most of the time, that is an exception rather than a rule. So to check on that assumption, I asked some of my friends and I tried to recall my own graduation day, which didn't take place in such a beautiful tent. It was still very beautiful. It was right in the sports center. And I could remember a lot of things from that day. I could remember the hats. I could remember the friends that were sitting on the left and on the right, I'm sure you will remember this in a few years. I could remember tons of pictures we were taking. I had no clue who the speaker was or a single word he or she said, which probably says more about me than about the speaker. 
but it did take some pressure off before the Hartwick team, with their steadfast resolve, pushed me to believe that the words uttered from this podium do matter. And I do have some things to say. So here we go. I am a professional reinventor. I'm asked to help businesses reinvent their products and services, their business models. And very often I'm asked to join the company or bring a solution to the company where things are already pretty bad, when they're in dire need of renewal. My job is to offer a new start. And as I stand here in front of you on the day of one of the biggest new starts of your life, my hope is to share just a little bit of inspiration and a few lessons that I learned in the last 20 years since my first day here in Hartwick. And I really only have three lessons, three big ideas that I want to share with you that I hope will be relevant for you. So the big lesson number one, change is accelerating and you will have many more new starts that you can possibly imagine. Let me explain. Every company, every community and every career, yours and mine included, goes through a life cycle. We start our life and our organizations start a life, they go to the peak of performance and then they go down towards annihilation. In the past, this process, this life cycle of a typical company was very, very long. We had all the time in the world to reach the peak and all the time in the world to get to the end of the story. So reinvention was very rarely needed because change was so rare. Most of the companies in the 20th century spent about 75 years in the typical life cycle, meaning that they had 40, 37 years to get to the top of performance and about 37 to the end. Today, a typical company has to survive and the only way it can survive if it reinvents itself every two to five years. If you don't, you will be in a long graveyard of the companies that are no longer here. I'm sure you still remember what Blockbuster is. Probably have a Nokia phone somewhere hanging in your storage container. Maybe a few of you were recently at the final sale at Toys R Us. That's the graveyard I'm talking about. But it also applies to you personally. When our grandparents and even some of our parents were graduating from college, most of them dreamt about living in one city, working for one company, having one career. That was the normal life. Today, the latest data shows that you will have five different careers in your life. Not five companies you will work for, not five jobs, Five different careers, meaning those of you who graduate in, as nursing majors, most likely will end up lawyers and then programmers and then somebody else, professions we cannot even imagine. And those of you who are still unsure, don't worry about it. In a few years, you will come up with a new career, so no pressure. The speed of change is accelerating and you will face many more new starts that you can possibly imagine or we had to ever change and face in our life. But that's not all. Change is also coming in many, many new forms. Very often it's a change we love, it's a change we worked on, like this very graduation day is a change here that you took part on. But sometimes it's not. In my life, I had a lot of beautiful changes, changes I actually wanted, that entered my life much faster than I could imagine. Only one year after graduation, I met the love of my life. Only three years after graduation, my daughter was born, who is sitting right there with my husband. Only six years after graduation, I started a company that celebrates 11 years of growth this year. Thank you. But most often, most often, change comes to your life without any invitation. It's the change you don't want, you didn't hope for, and you actually pray to avoid. Only three weeks after my wedding, I went back to Kazakhstan to take care of my mom who had a very advanced form of breast cancer. Only five years, five years after graduation, 
my father-in-law killed himself. Only seven years after graduation, we lost all of our savings in the economic recession. Most often than the other way around, change that is coming into your life without any desire or any invitation, and you still have to deal with it. So this is where my lesson number two comes to play. When change comes, you have only two options. Fight it or use it. I hope you use it to reinvent. Don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with fear of change. Fear is a very important and underappreciated emotion. Fear is there to help us focus, to organize our energy, to direct it in a one area so you can fight whatever you're facing. But when it comes to most change, fighting it is just a waste of your energy. Change is very annoying, even the change that you brought about that you wanted. For example, starting a new job, marrying a person you actually want to marry, moving to another country or even another part of the world, even in those times, change is very frustrating, it's very confusing and draining. But change is also an opportunity. It's a chance to get rid of things that no longer serve you. It's a chance to find a new opening in your life. It's an opportunity to find something new. When you invite change and reinvention into your life, when you allow yourself to let go, when you strip yourself of things that no longer belong or no longer are useful, you earn the right who you choose to be. That is the ultimate freedom. So I hope when change hits you hard, whether the one you liked it and wanted, or the one that you really didn't want, you will use it as an opportunity to move forward. And this is where my lesson number three becomes important. When you invite change into your life and you start using it as a force of reinvention, of course you need to have strong reinvention muscles. It's very natural to assume that you need to study and develop those, but here's good news. You don't need to become a reinventor. You already are. You are born with it. Uh, Carol Dweck from Stanford University recently asked a beautiful question. Have you ever met an unmotivated baby? <laughs> with exception of real health tragedy, babies are wired for reinvention. This is what we are meant to do. I remember when my daughter discovered she has hands. It was so clear that for the first time she realized this is hers and she can control it. Suddenly, a whole bunch of new things, I apologize, a whole bunch of new things were possible. She could reinvent. You are a natural, native-born reinventor. You probably were educated out of it a bit, but here at Hartwick, some of those skills were fully restored. I travel all around the world and I was fortunate enough to live in three different continents. And wherever I go, with very few exceptions of some very unique places, every country in the world teaches their new students exact same thing when they enter the elementary school. Whether you're in Kazakhstan or in US, in Ghana or in Brazil, in China or in Norway, absolute majority of our schools teach our kids at five, six or seven exact same thing. Can you guess what it is? I'm sure you're thinking about numbers or letters or perhaps a name of the teacher. I wish we were so imaginative. The unfortunate reality that absolute majority of the schools today teach our little children how to sit still. Why do they do that? It's because we had such a slow pace of change. Our kids needed to learn how to sit still for 40 minutes so they can prepare to stand still or work still for eight, 10 or 12 hour work shift. So they can stay still for 30, 40 or 50 year career at the exact same place doing exact same thing. But that time is long gone. That world is no longer here. Today, you will have to face more change and sitting still is no longer good enough. Change is here, it's accelerating, and you are wired to reinvent. 
This is the light that is inside you and me from birth. We are born to do greater things. We are born to try something new. We're designed to improve things, to go on, to do better. That's who we are. It is such an amazing honor to be here with you today. I know that some of you are probably sitting there with a mix of anxiety and a bit of anticipation because I'm pretty much the last course before the main meal, which is the diplomas right there. Enjoy it. Soak it in. Take more selfies than is acceptable. <laughs> Hug your friends more than you think is appropriate. Who knows when you see them next time. Drink a bit of water after some parties yesterday, I would assume. That's a need. Take this time. Own this time. Change is here. But you are ready. Congratulations, class of 2018.